kick back. Right, and relax and let the car just take over. Watch Streaming Good Day Ooh, while like the computer's driving your car. Okay, some good ideas. Let's check in with Ed Wallace. He has the 2018 Cadillac CT6, and apparently this could drive itself. Actually, it does drive itself. Whoa. We've already driven the CT6 when it first came out. For Cadillac, it's a great luxury car. It comes space price about 55,000, has a four cylinder engine in it, believe it or not. This is the Platinum. It has the three liter V6 with 404 horsepower. One little complaint when the engine's cold and you hit hard acceleration, it's the only time it doesn't feel like a BMW 7 Series. But I brought this over today for a different reason. And that's because this one has the GM Super Cruise self-driving system on it. Now, I've brought over cars with self-driving systems, a Volvo XC90 that was kind of okay, worked under 30 miles an hour, and I didn't think it was going to stop once when it was following another car. We just did the Nissan Rogue with the Pilot Pro, and it was okay. But this Cadillac is something else. What General Motors did is they sent engineers out and they 3D did 3D mapping with LiDAR of every divided freeway in America. And it's stored on a disc in the back, so the car knows about where it is by looking at its surroundings in 3D. The GPS system is about four times as precise as any other. So this morning, when I started to come in, the car is gonna watch your eyes to make sure you're paying attention to the road. It's gonna make sure you're in a lane. It's gonna make sure it's on a freeway it knows and when the light comes on, you can push the button. And from West Fort Worth to when I exited in Dallas, this car drove itself the entire length, 37 miles, and did it flawlessly. There was no wandering to the edges. It stayed dead center in its lane. Even went through the construction area in Arlington at 360, which GM says they don't like construction areas. It has a problem when people want to cut in front of you three or four lanes because they're about to miss an exit and you get worried about it. And if you take your eyes off the road, the camera's going to catch you and it's going to start flashing red to pay attention. Once you recenter your eyes, you're good to go. Again, 37 miles perfectly in the lane. But it's got other technology on it too. It has that great rear view mirror inside the car that you can flip a button and it becomes a widescreen TV monitor and you can see absolutely everything behind you. On the dash, it has a button to park itself, whether parallel parking, you actually pick the type of parking space you're dealing with and it'll do that. All the way around, this car was great with one exception. If you have to watch the road with no deviation whatsoever, maybe you just ought to be driving the car. So maybe, Tim, in the next generation, We'll have a self-driving system from GM that actually will let you watch a good day on stream. Other than that, the GM system makes all the other self-driving cars look cheesy. With that, oh. y'all have a good weekend. Who knew? Goodness. All right. Thanks, Ed. You can listen to Ed on 570 KLAF tomorrow. His car column is always in Saturday's Fort Worth Star-Telegram. I don't think you'd trust a car. I would trust a car more than I would trust most people. <laughs> okay, that says a lot. <laughs>